Now, ladies and gentlemen, Raymond is a graduate of University of Illinois. And prior to joining the CME, he practiced as a CPA in Arthur Anderson's Small Business Audit and Tax Division in Chicago. And from 1983 to 2004, he was a member of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and served on the S&P 500 Pit and Pit Oversight Committees, Technology Committee, and Index and Options Market Nominating Committee. He also co-founded and served as president of Local Knowledge Pioneering in Online Trader Development from 1997 to 2004. Now, with 30 years of trading and trader development experience, Raymond founded Archimedes Partners in 2005, as well as Intuitive Development Training. So without any other delay, let me go ahead. Let me bring on to our last presenter for today. Raymond Burchett is from Intuitive Performance. Go ahead. Take away, Raymond. Joe, thank you very much, and I uh, want to welcome everyone in. And I hope you have enough energy left to listen to me. I'm going to move fast, keep you awake. Uh, there will be plenty of time for questions at the end, so... Uh, here we go. Trading futures, options on futures, and retail off-exchange foreign currency transactions involve substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. I'm going to talk about planning and supporting trader development. We don't want to get the cart before the horse. So I've been at, been at this a long time, uh, specifically developing traders since 1997. And I create independent thinkers to strive to process the smallest amount of information in the shortest period of time. This is how successful traders earn a real edge to see and do before others. Success is highly unlikely if we have to process third-party information on top of our own before making decisions. We end up chasing the market instead of staying ahead of it. So the biggest thing that uh, I can give you guys today is greater awareness for just how important it is to think independently to create our own future vision to see where that market is going so we can anticipate price movement. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that get us, block us from thinking independently, and I'm going to make you aware of those. And then we're going to plan to overcome those and also learn how to support ourselves so we stay in a strong place and don't fall victim to those things that want to take away our power, namely our ability to think independently, develop that future vision so we can stay ahead of price movement. Again, we do not want to chase the market. We always want to know what we want to do, why we want to do it, how we're going to do it. When we're in that place, we have the greatest awareness for when to enter and exit the market. So let's understand why traders fail. Top of the list, ego. We all have one. And our ego kills us by constantly telling us we can control things that we can't and know things that we don't. Best way to understand ego is go back and remember Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. Think of Wiley Coyote as your ego. In all those cartoons, he's chasing the Roadrunner. I don't know why but he always ends up crashing and burning. And this is what happens when our ego gets the best of us, telling us we can control things that we can't, know things that we don't. We end up getting in over our heads. We never prepare appropriately. It leads to frustration, anxiety, burnout, big, big problems. Second reason traders fail. We become seduced by the simplicity of the trading proposition. Think about it. So I'm going to go up or down, or I can, uh, I can sell them and then buy them back. And when I started trading or started looking into it, I thought it was the coolest thing. I mean, I don't have to wait for it to go down before I can trade. So simple, right? It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. And then I've got all this great technology to help me make my decisions. And everybody's computer literate. It's not like it was back in, you know, 97 when they first started putting the E-mini up against the S&P and screen trading really started to get into the retail space. I was part of all of that. Um, you know, the learning curve today is such that you can get up and running and be trading within about 24 hours. Really scary how fast uh, you can be up and at it. And unfortunately, before you know it, you get seduced by the simplicity of the trading proposition, consumed 
by the power and temptation of the arcade environment. And we really understand how easy it is for that to happen when we've got our ego telling us we can control things that we can't and know things that we don't. So all of these things come together and they make it really, really easy for us to fall into the learning gaps created by simulated trading and also the bad habits. And you're probably wondering what some of those learning gaps are. Well, simulated trading has us focused on clicking the mouse, figuring out when to buy, when to sell. In other words, on all the functional stuff, it ignores all the foundational things that need to be in place to develop the awareness so we can make the right functional decisions about price movement. Think of it this way. You're the greatest virtual soldier that there's ever been. You kill everybody online. People are always calling you up to come and be, uh, compete with them. But imagine what your survivability would be if you're in that virtual combat environment and all of a sudden you're dropped into a real combat situation. You probably have a shelf life of a few minutes at best. And the reason why, you have none of the foundational knowledge, foundational decision-making in place that would allow you to organize and interact in a way that's going to keep you uh, in the best position, protecting your flank, your six, uh, division of labor, in other words, re responsibilities, all those things that take literally 18 to 24 months to drill into a real soldier. And so none of that is there because it's a virtual environment. Same thing in trading. None of that foundational stuff is there. And if we don't understand the gaps, we're in big trouble. And in addition to those gaps, there's bad habits. One of the biggest bad habits simulated trading creates is trading more than a one lot. Remember, learning how to trade is all about validating good decision making. And if you can't validate good decisions with the one lot, it makes no sense to think that trading a two lot or a four lot or a ten lot is going to improve your decision making. So just some very basic things that most folks never become aware of. So what do we have to plan for? We've got to build the foundational decision making components. We don't want to put the cart before the horse. And it's these foundational decisions that develop the awareness necessary to make the right functional decisions about price movement. Again, most traders never think about this because they either don't have a mentor or their ego is so big they think it's something that they don't have to worry about. So the next thing we have to understand is who we're trading against. I don't know how many of you thought about who you're trading against. And then we have to figure out how to compete against them, what we've got to do to put ourselves in the best position to see and do before them in the market. What are the conditions that are going to give us an advantage? And then we've got to develop the tools and methodologies needed to execute our strategy. And then this is the most important part. We have to be able to detail why our how is going to work. I don't know how many of you have ever done that. Sat back and really understood, got the dirt under your fingernails to understand just why what you're doing is going to work. You should be able to draw straight lines. And then how do we know that we're ready? is that we're certain of market state, confident of strategy, committed to waiting for market alignment. In other words, we've done the foundational stuff to have the awareness to make the right functional decisions. We understand who we're competing against, what we have to do to be effective against them, and we can understand why our how is going to work. In other words, why our tools are going to be effective for executing that strategy we need to prosecute to defeat the enemy. So how do we know we're ready to sim? Would you, uh, do you understand the absolutes? In other words, every profession has them. Trading's no different. 
Do you really understand the absolutes? Do you accept and hold yourself accountable to them? And we're going to talk about those in a few minutes. Do you have a strategy? Do you have the tools? When you have those things, then you're ready to start sin. If you start to sin before you have those things, high, high, high probability you're going to fail. Most people think they can make it up as they go along or follow somebody and they get crushed. So, what's required of the trading professional? Well, you've got to have the aptitude and desire to do this. Again, you can't let your ego tell you you can control things that you can't know things that you don't. In other words, if you're tone deaf, you're not going to sing. If you don't have eye-hand coordination, you're not going to be a baseball player. So aptitude and desire have to align. And then you've got to be guided by rational perspectives. In other words, you're not going to be successful overnight. This takes a significant amount of time and effort to develop that foundation so we can get to that level of certainty, confidence, and commitment we need to participate in the market. So what's the aptitude? The ability to work, to think independently of others. At the end of the day, trading is all about processing the smallest amount of information in the shortest period of time. So our decision making is further ahead of price movement than everyone else. In other words, we're seeing and doing. We're not sitting around and thinking, damn, I should have got in, or damn, I should have got out. We're seeing everything unfold. And to do that, we have to be able to think independently. We can't come in here and think we're going to play follow the leader, follow someone in a room, or follow someone's uh, strategy. That's a good starting point. It gives us training wheels. But we have to understand it for what it is. It, 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 it's training wheels, and then we have to move on from there to find our own way now that we've been pointed in the right direction. Obviously, you have to have a tolerance for capital risk. You're going to lose money. You're going to have losing trades. Good rule of thumb is if you can break even after six months, you're doing wonderful. They figure it's going to be a year before you're going to start making money. Don't come to trading and think it's a get-rich-quick thing. Again, it's a profession, not like any other, or not unlike others. And you have to have fortitude, the ability to persevere. You'd be able to take a punch, get knocked to the ground, and get up again time and time again. You have to have a long view. Again, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take a tremendous amount of commitment. And if you've gone through things as an athlete, as a musician, uh, maybe as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, you're well suited to do this. But if you've never gotten knocked on your ass before and gotten up, trading's probably not for you. So rational perspectives. They're developed by understanding, uh, by developing understanding for the depth of the trading challenge and how to meet it. There's a lot to this. Again, we don't want to be seduced by the simplicity of the trading proposition. We don't want to be consumed by the power and temptation of the arcade environment. That just takes us down a road where we fall into the gaps. We create a whole bunch of bad habits that most folks never get out from under. So please, 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 if you take anything away from this, understand that there's a boatload of work that's got to go in that has to be done before you're going to be ready to sim trade. And if you jump right in, try and figure it out as you go along, you're just going to put yourself in a very, very difficult place to get out from under.
also why specific beliefs and behaviors must be embraced and assimilated. Every profession has its absolutes. Trading's no different. Absolutes provide the foundation. Knowledge is built upon and competency is developed from. Engineering, medicine, law, accounting, sports, music. I'll give you a quick example of absolutes. When little boys and girls start to learn how to play baseball at five and six years old, they're introduced to what's called perfect fielding position. It's created by Doyle Baseball, the system from ready position through finish, follow through. There's about 16 elements. And together, collectively, they create the highest probability will field and throw the baseball for the out. And so by the time little boys and girls get to be about seven years old, if they have a decent coach, they've been introduced to all of those components. And so it's the little boys and girls that keep taking themselves to a deeper understanding of those absolutes that end up playing on club teams and travel teams. The ones that go deeper end up playing on their high school team. The ones that go deeper get drafted or play in college. The ones that go deeper end up in the starting lineup in the pros. The ones that go deeper become champions, become all-stars. The ones that go deepest end up in the Hall of Fame. And it's all because they kept accepting and holding themselves accountable to the absolutes. That's how we see and fill the gaps. Every time we do that, we gain competitive advantage. We gain trust, confidence. And that trust and confidence is what empowers us to think independently, tap into our creativity and imagination, integrate our skill, knowledge, and experience, create that future vision. In other words, if you don't know the absolutes, no matter what you're doing, you're going to be lost. You'll never get on the path. You'll never know how to stay on it. So at the top of the list, you need to understand the absolutes. How do you know you, or how will you know that you know them? When you have a very deep understanding for the depth of the trading challenge and how to meet it. And again, the absolutes will empower us to see and fill those gaps, will keep us on the path and keep us pushing, pushing us further and further down the road. And by further and further down the road, we'll keep recognizing that we only need to look at little or and little or slices of information to be effective and in turn our decision making will keep accelerating and we get that future vision we get further ahead of price movement and the other thing is the absolutes let us know we're doing everything we can to put ourselves in the best position to compete that happens because they have communicate and support performance expectations very effectively and imagine the power we have when we know we've done everything that we can to put ourselves in the best position to compete. I's are dotted, T's are crossed. All our energy is available to watch the ball and play the game. So what are the absolutes for trading? Well, the only thing we can control is keeping ourselves in the best position to anticipate and take advantage of price movement. It's the only thing we can control. So that's our objective, developing the awareness and ability to best anticipate and take advantage of price movement. Why it creates the highest probability for our success. How do we do that? By only trading when we're certain to stay confident in a strategy committed to waiting for market alignment. So how do we get there? It's our process. What's our process need to be? Accepting and holding ourselves accountable to the absolutes. And again, you'll know when you know the absolutes by how complete your understanding is for the depth of the trading challenge and what's necessary to meet it. In other words, you can draw straight lines to the what, the why, and the how, dot the I's, cross the T's, know that you've done everything you can to put yourself in the best position to anticipate and take advantage of price movement. Think of the absolutes as building the decision-making engine that optimize our decisions and execution. And it's that optimization that keeps pushing decision making further and further ahead of price movement. So that's the absolutes. Let's talk about our enemy. You know, I said we needed to know who we were up against. Well, it's algo high frequency and institutional traders. 
That's our enemy. And so is our ego, telling us we know things that we don't, control things that we can't. And so every day we've got to look that enemy in the eye. We have to know what we're doing to compete against algo high freaking institutional traders. We've got to make sure we've got our ego shut down so we can keep taking ourselves to that deeper place of understanding, seeing and filling the gaps, pushing ourselves further and further down the road. So let's break down the enemy, the algo, the high freak, the institutional trader. Their, their execution infrastructure is amazing. Their software, hardware, network, it's the best, okay? They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, millions of dollars a year on their infrastructure. And that's the high freak in the algo guy. The institutional guy has incredible capital, deep, deep pockets. And remember, the institutional guy is participating in the market to hedge their, their risk, if you will. So things are offset. So they can stay in the market, really let the trend work. Most retail traders can't afford those swings. And also, the knowledge of that institutional trader is generational. These guys have been at it a long time. They're really, really sharp. So that's what we're competing against, the high freak guys that really control the tick. In other words, that one or two increments of price change. The algo guys who really control fair value. And they control fair value by using that same infrastructure for the most part, the same network that high freak guys are. In other words, the algo guys trading fair value, they're more than likely to trade that sweet spot than the rest of us because of the platform that they're on. And then the institutional folks, they own the trend. So where do we fit? Well, we got to recognize their weaknesses to help understand where we fit. Mechanized systems prevent them from evolving in real time. In other words, it's locked into a black box. They've got great artificial intelligence in there, but at the end of the day, they got what they got. They can't evolve in real time. And then there's also the risk of being placed at a technological disadvantage. Right? In other words, these systems, these networks, technology is changing at a faster and faster pace. So again, that's why it's hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, millions of dollars a year to support these platforms and keep them competitive. And then that comes down to the cost of infrastructure. So how are we going to compete against these folks, understanding their strengths, their weaknesses? Well, we've got to anticipate and identify and execute directional opportunities. And it's these directional trading opportunities. In other words, when the market's going to move pretty quickly over a short period of time, that gives us the greatest advantage. And fortunately, we've had a couple of those opportunities over the last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, we had a pretty long drought. But usually, you'll get a couple of these a week. And then once we understand them, then we can also use them to set up other trades. But why they put us at an advantage, the high freak guys don't do well with volatility when the market's moving fast. In other words, it's difficult for them to lock in. High freak guys like to get in and trade between exponential moving averages. They like to trade on the open, the, the cash close. They like to trade on economic releases because they take advantage of digitized news feeds. But they don't like it when there's a lot of volatility. Um, algo traders, again, they trade fair value. With the more volatility there is, the tougher it's 
is for them to identify fair value. And again, the institutional guys, when volatility kicks in, they're already in. They're already hedged. So again, we want to learn how to identify these directional opportunities, see them coming, and then take advantage of them. So SIM trading. Don't SIM until after you really have a handle on the absolutes. Understand who you're trading against. Have a strategy to go up against them. And then have developed the tools to execute that strategy. When you have those pieces in place, you've got the foundational knowledge you need to begin to SIM trade. If you start before those things being in place, chances are you're going to bury yourself so deep you won't be able to get out from under it. So again, most folks jump in, they fall into the gaps, they develop the bad habits, they never have a chance. So if we take the time to learn about the what, why, and how before we begin, we're going to be in a much, much better place. So SIM trading is the start of practical application, and it's the start of a balancing act. Because not only are we developing the functional, the practical application, we still have to maintain the foundational decision-making engine. In other words, it's something that has to be maintained every day both the foundational and the functional. And when we go to live trading, you know, once we've validated our ability to make good decisions, um, and maintain that foundational decision-making engine, then we're ready to trade live. Again, we validate good decisions, we, our ability to maintain that foundational engine or decision-making engine, then we're ready to trade live. And then once we go live, that maintenance of the foundational and the functional development is only going to become more and more demanding because now we're going to have all the emotional overhead that we have to deal with that's created by capital risk and market volatility. And it's our process that's ultimately going to determine the outcome. It's our process that places us and keeps us on that path. In other words, anxiety down, energy high. We know we're doing what we need to do to put ourselves in the best position to anticipate and take advantage of price movement. And I teach what's called the intuitive development process. As far as I know, I'm the only person that's linked high performance to intuitive function. And to understand the value of that, um, Certainly going to encourage you to read customer comments, folks that have gone through my training. They're up on my website. Intuitive function causes us to filter, process, and apply information most effectively. All right, so we're all intuitive. And some great examples are professional athletes, musicians. All right, we're all intuitive, but the folks that are most successful consistently achieve and sustain deeper intuitive states. Great examples, Gretzky, Aaron, Jordan, Montana, four guys who couldn't physically dominate anybody, but they all rose and stayed at the very top of their professions because of their ability to consistently compete at deeper intuitive states. They just had superior competitive awareness that allowed them to see and do before others. And so... When we can formally develop and support intuitive function, we have a great advantage because now we're expanding and accelerating our capacity and ability to filter, process, and apply information. We keep getting to the smallest amounts of information needed and developing the horsepower we need to process that information as fast as we can to create that future vision. In other words, we're developing the awareness and ability to make the most out of all the other digital power available to us instead of being controlled by it. 
great example. If you want to understand if you're using the digital power available to you or if you're being controlled by it, if you view technology as a solution, you're being controlled by it. If you view technology as a solution, you're being controlled by it. If you use technology as a tool that's just giving you some pieces of information that you decided that are relevant to your decision-making process, then you're making good use of digital power. In other words, as long as you're the decider, creating your own future vision using technology to give you the pieces of information you need to go into your decision-making soup to create that future vision, then you're the decider. But if you're sitting around waiting for technology to tell you when to buy or sell, you're dead in the water and you don't even know it. So I've got some stuff for you. I want uh, certainly to take some time to answer questions. And I, I think I'll be able to go a few minutes over here because of the late start. It's uh, 5, 6.51 on the East Coast. But I just want to take about uh, three minutes here to run through some freebies for you and how you can lear learn more about what I do. And then uh, I'll take questions. So any questions, go ahead and start throwing them up in the panel. Every morning from 7 to 8 Central, I do a daily briefing online. You can copy down this uh, email address, and uh, you see it there. So you can do a snip, a screen capture. Um, maybe Joe uh, can send that out for me. But go ahead, register, go to meeting, and I'll permission you, and you can come in for that daily briefing. I pick apart the S&P, get into great detail on market state, structure, momentum, value levels triggered, where uh, participation by smart money is likely to be triggered. And then we get into uh, discuss economic events in a manner promoting independent thought. In other words, we're never going to be that idiot watching the talking heads and having drool coming out of our mouth, nodding our heads. And so we're going to go through them. So that's the daily briefing. And again, do a screen capture, a snip. And actually, let me just pause here, and I think I can put this in the box real quick. If you guys will just stick with me here for a second. Now, for some reason, my browser's disappeared, but... Actually, Ray, I just went ahead. So anyway... I just went ahead and sent it out to the audience. So if you did not receive that, go ahead. Please send me a private message. I'll go ahead and resend out that link again. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Joe. All right. So that's number one. Number two is my intuitive development programming. It, there's all sorts of options available on demand, real time. You can go for the full-blown year-long professional trader development program or take bits and pieces. But most importantly, the way it's structured, you can tailor it to what's available, uh, to how best to suit your schedule. And so that means you can go slow or fast with a lot or a little support. And these are all the elements that are in the full-blown trader development program. We go through that foundational decision-making, that's the basic training. Then we get into the functional. That's the advance. That's a five-day immersion in trading that I do the second Monday of each uh, month. It's going on right now. It's called the circus. Then this is all supported by the daily briefing. Every evening I do an in-depth chart book on the uh, e-mini. On Sunday evenings we have a live review session. And then also there's a video, two-and-a-half-hour video called My Toolbox, 
which goes into in-depth instruction for all the tools, proprietary value level calculations, all the things that I use that you can go ahead and, and then develop, enhance what you're doing already. So if you'd like to have a free consultation with me, talk about your trading, the, the intuitive development process, what that can do for you, my email is ray at intuitiveperformance.com. And Joe, if you could send that out too, that would be great. Actually, I think I can do that myself. And just send that out to all. So you guys send me an email. We'll set up a time. I'll be happy to talk to you. So again, it can be as comprehensive as a full-blown program. It's a year-long program. It's $29.97. Or it can be as simple as my toolbox, which is $4.57. The most popular product that I have is the bundle. It combines the basic foundational decision-making with the functional, which is the advanced. And then it includes the chart book, the daily briefing, and my toolbox plus a free retake of the circus. And you get all of that for $8.97. And again, that's up on my website at intuitiveperformance.com. You go to the home page, all of this stuff will be uh, very easy to see. And so in this basic bundle, you get the intuitive development training, which is 12 hours, four sessions. You can do it live online or on demand. You have av availability to the on-demand recordings for a full year. Third Saturday of every month, I do a live review to continue to support. Come in and get your questions answered. Again, that goes on for a full year. And then you get to come to the circus, which is that one-week, uh, five-day immersion, integrating technical analysis, trade execution with the intuitive development process. And you also get a free retake, so you can come back the next month or the month after, or two months after, and do the circus again at no additional cost, that you just get a free retake. And then this is all the stuff that it's supported by, the on-demand recordings, the chart book, the Sunday evening reviews, the daily briefing, and the monthly IDT reviews. So this is supported very intensely. And again, because it's also all available on demand, you can do it at, at your own pace. So there's my contact information. Websites, intuitiveperformance.com. My email address, ray at intuitiveperformance.com. And when you go to the website, please make sure to read the customer comments. So I've got a couple questions up here. And uh, I want to see if I can answer them real quick. Um, William asks, uh, I'm sorry, Ray asks, what are the uh, your top absolutes in trading? Well, there's two sets of absolutes. There's absolutes, uh, professional beliefs and behaviors, and there's foundational beliefs and behaviors. And I, I don't have a lot of time to get into them, but the one absolute, and again, I've already shared it with you, the golden rule, only trade when you're certain the market state, confident in a strategy, committed to waiting for market alignment. That means you know what you want to do, why you want to do it, how you're going to do it. When you're at that level of awareness and ability, all your energy is available to develop greatest awareness for when to enter and exit. In other words, you are not encumbered by anything. And so that's what my process, that's what my training does, that's what I support to get traders to that place when they're only trading, when they're certain to stay confident in a strategy, committed to waiting for market alignment. Again, tremendous conviction, genuine knowing. You know, that's the one point I failed to make. There's this misconception that ego is a good thing, that it makes us strong, it makes us tough, drives us forward. Ego doesn't do that. Conviction does. Conviction is that genuine knowing that only comes from accepting and holding ourselves accountable to the absolutes, knowing that we've done everything we can to put ourselves in the best position to compete. If you're an athlete, go back to that time where you couldn't wait for the game to start, the competition to begin because you knew you did everything you could. You were good to go. Or maybe a musician uh, ready to go on stage. 
you're just ready to go out there and nail it. Okay? That's the level that we want to get to every time we go out to trade. If it's not there, then we step back until we have it. But that's conviction, genuine knowing. That's what we want to be driven by. We don't want to be driven by the fiction that's created by our ego telling us we can control things that we can't, know things that we don't. We don't want to be the wily coyote going through life, crashing and burning, because our ego is getting the best of us. So any other thoughts, comments, questions? Again, you guys can start this right away because it's available on demand and then come into the live trainings the way they fit your schedule. The uh, intuitive development trainings, I do two live sequences a month. Once in the afternoons, the first Monday of the month from noon to three, Monday through Thursday. Uh, the other is in the evening on the third Monday of the month. So next Monday, it'll be from seven to 10 in the evening, Monday through Thursday, but again, you can start them on demand at any time, and you have full year access to come back in and do the live trainings. And you guys should also know that people do my trainings multiple times, five, six, seven times. I had one guy fly in all the way from Dubai to do the trading live, okay, in person. And they do it multiple times because it's so powerful. The first time they go through the training, they're just blown away. It's an eye-opener. They're just amazed nobody ever told them this stuff before. They've been all around it, but now they can connect the dots. Second time through, now they can really begin to develop a tangible understanding for the, how this process is expanding, accelerating their capacity and ability to filter, process, and apply information. The third time through, they really begin to experience how it's optimizing their decision-making and execution, pushing it further and further ahead of price movement. And again, you'll get that uh, when you read the customer comments. So please don't think this is a quick fix. I strongly recommend a year-long trader development program. With that program, you can come to the circus every month, get the daily briefings every morning, chart books every night, Sunday evening reviews every Sunday. It also includes uh, my reflection program, we have unlimited email access to me. We do phone consultations. Okay, great. Once again, thank you, Raymond Burchett from Intuitive Performance.